The following is a sports presentation of KULP, the Rice Belt's recognized leader in sports programming. Hello, this is Matt Hammond here with a new addition to the halftime show this year, Retro Birds. A moment where I get the awesome opportunity to take some time to go out into the community and find former Rice Birds to see how things may have changed from their glory days to the new crazy atmosphere that high school sports bring today. This week, I bring you someone truly special to me, of course, my grandfather, John Nordine. John was a quarterback for the Rice Birds in the 1952 season before graduating in 53. I caught up with the soon-to-be 83-year young Rice Bird Johnny on how he felt the game has changed a bit since his heyday. That's been 65 years, John. What do you think watching the game now and from when you played has changed the most? Quicker, faster, bigger, stronger, faster. Tell me a little bit not about better looking, though. not better looking. Tell me a little bit about you guys used to have to play both ways a lot, right? Not me, thank goodness. Yeah, they did. A bunch of them played both ways. 48 minutes. So do you have any stories that you remember from your playing days? I'm sure you do. I know being your grandson, you tell me a lot of them. All I remember is getting beat by Wharton 20 to 19. A boy missed two extra points, and they won state champs. He was on the bus crying. Went away in Continental Bus Land. And tell me about the story, I believe... It was Clyde Shavers came in and gave you the play call one time? Yeah. <laughs> well, we had like, you know, like that play would have, we'd have called it 1234. Well, he came in and called it 1234. <laughs> 1234 on two. He was fast, though. Do you have any uh, former blockers that you want to thank? I think any of them blocked for me. Jack Mill would be one of them. I know come in a little one time, I said, uh, Jack, who did you block? Somebody knocked the hell out of him. I didn't know who they block, I didn't block anybody. <laughs> oh, boy. Good old days. So, do you enjoy going to the Riceburg games? I know you've been a season ticket holder for quite some time now. What do you enjoy most about going to the games? The good athletes, and there's plenty of good athletes come through El Campo from Glenn Lippman on up. And when did he play? Back in 48, probably in 47, 48. He was good. Played for A&M for four years, starting halfback, running halfback. What? Wasn't a that, very big boy, but he was good. That was on your brother's team, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they had a good ball club. They really did. And you have some connections. You were a Rice Bird quarterback, as I mentioned at the beginning of the interview here you have some connections yourself your cousin was also a riceberg quarterback right jack herbie yeah he was a quarterback he had a pretty good team he was a pretty good ball club back then and what year was that probably 49 50 49 50 yeah so riceberg blood runs in your veins huh yeah my daddy was a in for the rice birds back in 1918 i guess my brother was a good ball player. He couldn't play it last year. He ended up with TB. Pitiful. He was a good ball player, too. Do you like to thank anybody along your way? Did you have some coaches that might have helped you, gave you some good advice along the way? Coach Reynolds, he said, don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> what did being a rice bird, how has that helped you in your life? What did you learn from being a rice bird? Learn how to fight girls off of you. Learn the spirit of Rice Bird country, like being an Aggie. You had Rice Bird spirit, Aggie spirit. You had a lot of competitiveness, a lot of a lot of get-togethers, a lot of friends. Who's the one guy that you will never forget through all of Rice Bird history? You always talk about Glenn Lipman. There's been some good running backs throughout the history of the Rice Birds. Glenn Lipman is definitely one of them. Heath Sherman's another one. I mentioned him. Uh, Billy, Joe, Billy Joe Palashi. Yeah. Cloud Who? Shaver. Yeah, you, you. who might have been your most exciting to watch? Glenn Lippman. Glenn Lippman. Why is that? So, I, just, I don't know. He scored about 400 points. I don't know. He was about probably five foot six, had legs like a Betty Grable. Big muscle band legs. And just good, good runner. I think he led the state in scoring. I enjoyed watching. He was my brothers on that team. And I, I enjoyed watching. They were a lot better than we were. I know that. What was the famous song that you always used to sing after your victories at Riceburg Games? 
Tem panță coci, mama drăuce, Îmi să ne beptava de azi pe noce, Iulare, iulare, iacte mămrare, Iulare, iulare, iacte mămrare. Well, that's going to wrap up week one of Retro Birds. Big thanks to John Nordine. Join us next week to find out which former rice bird might be next.